I, I want to devote a good portion of the show today to uh, discussing what's going on in, in Japan. There are a lot of issues there. We're not going to be CNN. We're not going to cover every issue of the earthquake and the disaster relief. There are great places to find resources there, but we can help point you towards some of those resources, and we can tell you a little bit about the technology. Most important, we can actually give you some on-the-scene reports from listeners in the Tech News Today audience who have been good enough to call and write us uh, from Japan. I want to start off with the economic side of things, not because the human side isn't important. It, it is much more important. It's extremely important, but you can't ignore the effect. It's interesting to see, like, well, how is this going to affect business? Uh, and, and I was listening to the Economist podcast this morning, and they said, look, we always tend to overestimate the economic impact of natural disasters because they are so dramatic. Uh, it turns out usually they don't have nearly the effects that you think they're going to have. And there's a, uh, a an article out today in the San Jose Mercury News essentially saying that same thing. It looks like there's going to be a tightness in the flash memory market, uh, but most of the industry seems to be okay. One of the lucky things is most industrial complexes are located in the south of Japan. So they weren't as impacted by, by the earthquake as the companies up in the north. Uh, the two most pressing concerns for the industry are damage to the transportation infrastructure and reliability of power according to Dale Ford at IHSI Supply. It could take as long as two months to resolve those problems. And I'm seeing that in a lot of places I'm reading. Uh, it's not so much that the factories can't work. Or get, you know, the factories you know, are having a hard time getting back. But keeping them running uh, and having the efficiencies of a constantly running factory is an issue because of the brownouts and the power issues. Uh, and also transportation. It's like you can make all the flash memory you want, but if you can't get it on a train and get it to a boat, and then get it shipped or get it to an airplane, uh, it's going to be hard to sell it. Yeah, and it, it, at first it feels a little bit morbid. Obviously, people are dealing with a massive, massive crisis on the other side of the world, but here in America, and I know we have listeners and viewers all over the world, uh, it, it feels a little bit weird to be like, yeah, but will my gizmos continue to be on time? But it, it is important to take a moment and take a long view and, and recognize what's going to happen to the distribution logistics of the way not only our, our electronics, but, but all the imports that we get from Japan right. and the, all the affected areas. Yeah, it, it's definitely not the most important story coming out of Japan, but that doesn't mean that it's should be ignored entirely. Uh, some other uh, really good stories coming out of Japan. Uh, and Gadget reports today that AT&T, Sprint, Verizon, Dish Networks, Comcast, and Cox Communications have all announced plans under which free calls can be made to, the, to Japan, and as well as free text messages in a lot of cases, between now and March 31st. So, you know, for all the vitriol we were spewing at some of these companies earlier today, this is a good move, and I applaud them for it. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, and, and look, this is one of those times when it's like uh, there's nothing but good to be done. You do good for the people. You do good publicity for yourself. Uh, we know the folks over at Apple kept their Wi-Fi on. They were allowing people to come in and actually bunk down in the, uh, the Apple stores. Um, it's brief moments like this where to see everyone come together and put aside you know, the bottom line for a brief moment makes everyone... Face, good. Yeah, that, that Apple story is really touching. Kevin Rose had uh, some emails that he posted on his blog about, you know, it, it became that scene from the movie where everyone gathers around the electronics store and watches the TV broadcast, except for the modern era. Everyone was in the Apple store watching the live stream on the uh, laptops that they have set up there. Also, Facebook set up a Japan earthquake page for users to find information about disaster relief. Google has set up a crisis response project. We've talked about in the, that in the past, although an interesting spin on that, uh, Google is now encouraging people to take photos of the posters with people's names with their cell phones and send them uh, to an address tohoku.anpi.google at Picasso Web. Uh, and once sent, the photo will be automatically uploaded to the Picasso Web album uh, where people can, can view this and, and keep track of, of each other. Uh, NTT Docomo, Japan's largest wireless carrier, has set up a database where you can enter the cell phone number of a person to confirm his or her safety. Uh, so uh, just uh, you know, a lot of coming together of businesses large and small in, in this effort to try to help people out. Now, this is interesting. In the chat room, Stephen M. just tweeted or sent over to us that Verizon's offering free access to TV Japan through their Fios TV service. So and I think it's fascinating. Informed. Yeah, that's great. That we see, I think it's fascinating that we see uh, the, how the interconnectedness of our society nowadays not only makes possible massive amounts of relief we saw with the Red Cross donations is so super easy just to donate over your phone, but also in prevention of disaster. There was a, a recent tweet from Scientific American saying, and I forget the number, it was millions or billions of dollars were saved by proper planning and preparation for the tsunami. And in a case where 
time is of the essence. Once you have an earthquake and you need to get the word out that we expect a massive tsunami to happen,